Hey everybody, Rick's here and I want to welcome you to part 8 of my realistic drawing tutorial series. Uh, this one, of course, featuring this young man with great hair. And if you haven't seen my first seven videos on this, I would highly recommend you start from the beginning. Just go to my channel's playlist. Just look down in the description area. I'm likely going to have it down there. And go to that playlist and, and watch those first seven before coming over to part eight. And again, I'm going to do this in real time. That means that... Uh, you know, there's going to be parts that are slow and drawn out because there's no time lapse whatsoever. It's all in real time because many of you have asked me for that. I apologize to those who like time lapse, but in this case, you can, of course, skip ahead if you like. If there's, you know, parts that uh, may be too slow for you or, you know, you got what you needed and you want to get to the next part, but, you know, I've got to respect those who really want to see this thing done in a snail's pace. And that is exactly how I draw in a snail's pace. So there you go. That's there for you. Anyway, so without further ado, let's get right into this drawing tutorial. Okay, so we're going to get back on this drawing here. And uh, more specifically, this side of the face. Now, as you can see in the reference here, that uh, it's this is all very dark. So what I want to do right now is I'm actually going to go in here first off, since the main details have already been included. I won't I don't uh, won't lose the location of the eyebrow or the eye itself because it's now been put in here. I can now safely go ahead and darken this whole side of the face here, and then I can start pulling out the details uh, that I see in here by lightening uh, a, a lot of it or darkening uh, much of it. So, to do this, what I've decided to do to continue is I have, I have two options. One, I continue uh, to use, let's say, these, uh, this um, Primo Elite, boy, I, I'm, I'm having a real tongue twister time here. I could continue using this charcoal pencil here and continue to put in the texture, blend, texture, blend, or I could come in with some charcoal powder and just go wholesale on this thing and then go in with the detail. And what I've decided to do is the latter. I'm going to go in with some charcoal powder and I'm going to kind of do this wholesale all the way down to here. Then I'm going to come in with this charcoal pencil and I'm going to start to get some of the details in here uh, that I need and then blend those out and then we'll get down into the down and dirty details uh, if time permits. Now using the charcoal powder is actually going to allow me to cover more ground in a shorter period of time without sacrificing the quality of the drawing. So to do that uh, I'm going to go ahead and use uh, this General's charcoal powder. Um, I don't know if this is still available on the market or not. I've, I've heard some people say no and, and I've tried looking for it and a lot of places don't have it anymore so I don't know what the deal is but um, anyway. So let me get uh, a q-tip here. I see I have one that I already used but I'm going to just go ahead and use the other end here. And very carefully I'm going to dip inside the charcoal powder I'm going to tap it on the rim and I'm going to go from there. Now I'm going to go very lightly because I don't want to go dark right away. But I do want to darken this whole side of the face. Keeping my eye on the reference so that I don't get carried away. But this side of the face is definitely darker than this side of the face and so I, I do want to make sure that I lay down a base that that shows that. You can see how quickly you can go from light to dark doing this. 
Okay, I'm going to get that shadow in here, the tip of the nose, follow it out where it goes, all the way to here. See, I'm looking at everything carefully here, and I want to mimic it with this powder. And it's not that hard to do. As a matter of fact, it's, it's quite a simple way of doing this. Now, one of the things you really need to be careful about when doing this approach is getting blotchiness, where you have heavy and then light areas due to um, when you have too much powder and when you're starting and then you have less and less powder, you can create what, what looks like a very blotchy appearance on the face. and. That's not a good look to have. And you got to be careful that you don't also create direction lines or anything like that. So make sure you go around and even things out. Make it all nice and even, one tone. And then you can come in and lighten areas up. Which means, by the way, do not press this charcoal into the fibers of the paper. Just coat the top of the paper with it and push it around. I'm being very light with this. I don't need to be pressing down and grinding it into the paper because you will find it very difficult to lighten it up afterwards when it's necessary. Do you see how when I go like this how it's lightening it up already just by moving it around? Because I'm not pressing it into the paper. I'm putting it on the top. Naturally of course some is going to get in there, but you're not grinding it in there and making it extremely difficult to remove. So be aware of that, be cognizant of that as you do this. Now right here along the hairline is at its darkest, so I am definitely going to be being a little bit more generous with the powder in this zone here. Just following what I see here going along this ridge. And you can see that even though this area is dark, once I darken this area up here, notice now how light that looks in comparison to that when you look at how dark this is and then how this is not that much lighter. It's a little lighter but not that much lighter. Look at this, night and day. So it's amazing how something might look dark when there's nothing next to it except white. Or very light but then as soon as you lay down something darker on the other side here then all of a sudden it's starting to look like real contrasty and letting me know that I'm gonna have to come in here and darken all this even more so that the contrast between this and this is not as dramatic as the contrast between this and this I hope that makes sense to you and if not, just keep watching this series and it should become more evident as we go on. Okay, so and as I start pushing it around, you're going to start noticing it lightens itself up. Because I'm just pushing charcoal around here. Now I'm going to, periodically I'm going to be blowing across here to blow off the excess. Because I've done this for a while now, I know how to dry my lips before I do that, but you got to be careful. It's so easy to spit on your drawing, and then that's going to leave a real bad mark. So, just forewarning you there. All right. If you can blow dry air, good. Otherwise, don't do it. Of course, you know... Every uh, every author, I mean, uh, artist who um, shares these little tidbits, they know you're going to do it anyway. And you know, I'm I'm not under any illusion that you're you're going to go sure, yeah, okay, I won't do it just because you know you said because if I say, well, hey, I'm going to do it, but you don't do it, <laughs> you know how that works. Do as I say, not as I do, right? Yeah. That doesn't fly. See how heavy that uh, charcoal was I just laid down? 
Okay, but as I move it around real light, you can see that it just starts lighting up. Because I don't want it blotched. And I'm using, you know, circular motions here and there, pushing things around, just to get it nice and even. Like, just be careful. You'll be tempted to press. Don't press. Whatever you do, don't press. Okay. Give me a new Q-tip. This one's toast. Okay, this whole area here is darker. I'm going to go ahead and get that in there. I even started here in a previous video. Got that part in. All the dark areas that I saw in here I added charcoal to here. Now, at the moment, I'm not going in circular motion because I happen to know from looking at the reference photo that the beard hairs flow in a certain direction. So just like I do with the locks of hair when I'm putting a base coat, I can go ahead and just move this charcoal in the direction of the beard, even though it's in darkness, just because the brain and the eyes, I believe can detect things that maybe um, our conscience does not but our subconscious can pick it up like the flow and direction and I don't want to give off that the hair is moving side to side when in fact the hair is moving down from here like so so I'm just gonna go ahead and do that just like I do with the hair uh, it served me well up to this point and I don't see any reason to stop doing it that way just a suggestion, I highly recommend it. Go with the direction when you're putting your your base coat on of which way the hair flows. And we'll leave the conspiracy theories to others as to whether it means anything or not. Now because this video is going to be real time, uh, clearly um, I have to be careful that we don't make the video way too long. But drawings take a long time. Usually what I like to do is just for areas that uh, is redundant is to move it faster like you know time lapse it but you know I do get a lot of folks that say they pref they're really happy that I don't time lapse all my drawings in my videos and um, they appreciate that uh, that they're mostly in real time 
And so for those who prefer the time lapse, I mean, in all honesty though, if if an if I'm doing something that may seem a little bit like watching, you know, grass grow or paint dry or whatever the metaphors happen to be that you like, um, just remember you can always skip ahead. See, so that's important. Now I'm at a point here that I want to kind of confirm um, that I got this correct or not. It just it's very difficult to see. In this drawing, what I have here is this a face? Is this a beard? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab and put that up to the light, and I can see that I have okay. This looks good here. All right. That's interesting. Okay, so. It's hair there, the beard there. It seems to be kind of a baldish spot here. Okay, this part comes down to there, and it looks like it tails up. So I may even have too much on here as it is, it's just because it was dark. So I'm going to make some adjustments here just so I can feel good about myself. How's that? Okay. So according to this, okay, come down to about right here, and you curve in here. Okay, this is really, really tough to determine what he's got going here, but you're seeing this in real time. I'm sorry if it gets a little dull, but I'm going to do some measuring here. And using the light that I got here, my otter light, I want to do a little measuring here and make sure. So from here to here, yeah, that's about right. See where I have the end of that light mark there so it ends about right here very interesting okay and so the face itself is it's like that hmm okay and then that's got to be beard through here to there. All right. Well, that's going to be fun. Okay. Now, here's another thing I can do, which is really great. Because I have this dark side here, it's very difficult for me to see things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on one of those light tracing boxes. So it can help me to see through here where the certain details are. So I'm going to go ahead and pause this video so I can get that, that light tracing box. Okay, I've moved this table over a little bit here so that you would get a, a better view of what I was doing. And here I've got me a, a light tracing tablet I've done in one of my videos. And you know, you turn that thing on there we go let's see if I can turn this on brighter okay and it's now lit up enough so I can actually see better behind this photograph so that's another handy way of using this move this grid out of the way I don't have any use for that actually at this point okay in fact go ahead and well, we'll just leave it like that. It's not, not in my way. All right. And if you want to see how that looks, let me just shut off one of these lights here. All right. And we'll shut off this light. See, look at that. So I can now see this a whole lot better in trying to replicate it here. So I got that working for me, and let's see, 
Got me my lights here going. Okay, so let's continue on. And need my charcoal powder. I'm going to just finish this up here. So from what I could see here, I need a little bit more up here. I'm going to have to probably do this with pencil. See this line that I drew here, which was supposed to be the edge of the beard? See, I could see that the beard actually extends a little bit higher up. So I'm going to blend that out. And, and it will blend out really easy because I did not press hard in the first place. All right. So let's see we get rid of some of this blotchiness. Spread that around real nice. All right. Get underneath the hairline area there. Okay, now I'm going to get me another Q-tip because I actually want a clean one. A clean one will act a little bit like an eraser. That way I can shape this now a little bit. And watch how it lightens up when I do this. See? So your blender can not only add, but it can subtract. All right. Now I can see that the contrast between here and here is less than what I've put here. So I definitely got to go a little bit darker here and possibly a little lighter here. I'm not, the jury is still out on that. At this point, adding more charcoal powder isn't going to do me a whole lot of good. It'll just make it messier and and I'll have to uh, keep pushing it around. I just wanted a base and now that I have my base now I can go in with my darker pencils such as my Primo or my 9XXB those pencils and I can start putting in my textures, darkening areas and then maybe lightening some light lighten some areas like here needs to be darkened and this area needs to be darkened All right. All right, yeah, so I've, I've pushed that around pretty good and you notice how I decreased the contrast between here and here to meet more like what I see over here this one here has a different pattern, so I'll be fixing that real soon. But first things first, I need to put a lid on my charcoal powder. The worst thing to do is go, oops, and spill it all over my drawing. All right, so you see how quickly we got ourselves our, our dark coat here. See if I can raise this, this up better so that you can see it. For your benefit, I'm doing this. Let's see, there we go. How's that? Okay, so what I have to do is I'm going to have to tape this all down, otherwise it's going to, it's going to move around. So let me do that real quick. So I don't have a mishap. Okay, so let's, uh, let's tape this to here. And let's tape this whole thing and the tablet to the side of the table. Maybe that will stay. I don't know. We'll, we'll play it by ear. Okay, now you can also see something pretty obvious here. If you take a look at the drawing, the darkness goes straight across here. You see this? Straight like this. But here I stopped here instead of going all the way across. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my clean q-tip and I'm going to bridge that gap as well just tone it down
All right, so I got the same shadow pattern going on here as I do in the reference. You see what I just did? And then I'll go in here and get all the details put in. I could see that the direction of the shadow here along the nose, how it curves. I can curve it here. In a moment, I'll lighten it, darken it, do whatever with it. All right. Other little things I can do while I'm at it. No, I don't have to do it right now, but while I'm thinking about it, for example, I can see things like, you know, the, the light coming off the crease. I could put that in now. I could put it in later. I'm probably going to end up blending it out again anyway, but just for effect that it's there. So I could do something like that. And there was a little bit up here, a little bit up here, and something right there. Then over here has just a tiny little, just lightening up just a little bit like that. And then of course there's a lot of polka dot, you know, whether it's from the photograph or whatever. But you can see this, just start to mimic the reference a little bit more. I'll put that to the side. Okay, so I'm down to some of the last things that I need to take care of. Mostly everything here has been shaded, although quite lightly. This side of the face here, the nose, is, is still paper white. I have not drawn in here, so I need to put in a tone. Because it's the brightest area, the lightest area, I'm going to go with a 4H pencil there, because I need to keep that as light as possible. So here's the 4H. And I'm just going to go ahead, and just so that it's not paper white anymore. First off, let me just get that line out of there from the original grid. And I'm doing this very gently so I don't lose the ability to put down light graphite without it going wonky on me. Alright. I'll use this to pick that stuff up. Alright. Okay, that should be good for now. I see I've moved the charcoal around a bit. Get that back in there. Now if you ever seen my videos like on the subject of negative space, um, instead of seeing always, for example, the shape like, okay, this thing comes down like this, curves around here like so, this comes down like this, curves around like so, what I may look, like, look at is the negative space, this hook here, this hook here, how wide it is from here to here, from here to there, and compare it to here to here and here to here. So I'm, instead of looking at the areas that I've drawn, I'm looking in the areas that I haven't drawn, looking for the identical shape in both sides. And that is very helpful. Okay, this nostril here, I'm going to put a little bit of this 4-H, but I know I'm going to have to go darker, because that is definitely not dark enough. Okay, so... Here, I am going to go ahead and just lightly, in a circular motion, lay down the 4H. Because the 4H is basically the lightest I'm going to get in value other than the paper, which is the highlights. But no, none of the skin is going to be is going to be paper white. There has to be some tone, so I'm going to go with 4H here.
just a circular motion very light coat With my hand, I'm just doing very small circles. That's all I'm doing, and I'm letting the pencil ride on the paper. I'm putting no pressure on it whatsoever. If I have to go darker, I'm not going to press on, on the pencil. I'm going to get me a softer pencil. I'm going to move up a grade. Now the nice thing about just letting the pencil ride on the paper that I found is that even if you keep going back over the same area over and over again because you want to make sure everything's nice and smooth and not you know spotty from lines or you know areas that maybe you didn't uh, um, go over enough the nice thing is is that it's not going to keep getting darker and darker and darker. It gets to the point where it saturates to the limit of that pencil assuming you don't press down on it because if you press I can make this I can make this 4H almost as dark as you know some of these darker tones by just pressing but you'll never get that out and you'll have such uneven tones too because you will not have the advantage of being able to just keep going over an area with without pressing just let it ride on the top you won't have that opportunity to get that even um, skin tone or any other even tone that you want to do now you notice that the nose is no longer paper white but it's very subtle very subtle Okay, that's it for the 4H for now. Now what I'm going to use here is a 2H, which is, oh, I'm dropping things already. Let's see what that is. And that's my 5H. Don't want to lose that, even though I don't use it. That's probably why it left the table, because it, it feels neglected. All right. So here I have my 2H, was the next step up, because in this area right under the nose here, okay, it's slightly in shade compared up here, but it's it's very, very hard to, to discern that, but it's definitely there, and I'm going to make sure that that's conveyed in this drawing here. Now, first off, what I gotta do is there was a line put in here originally as part of the sketch that marks the nose and I no longer want that there I want the shade to dictate whether something's there or not alright so now by adding this 
two two H in here, you will you will see a difference in shade instead of a line marking one from the other. And this whole area here is just slightly darker. So I'm going to put that in there. And again, I'm not pressing down, I'm just letting it ride. Another thing I notice is that I need, let's see, how about a 4B? Because I need to darken this area right here. get that darkened we'll flare it out just a little bit and then I need to take my kneaded eraser because there's little parts of it where it comes out into the open it lightens up just barely and I need to capture that so I will take some off Okay, seem to be having a little bit of trouble here with a dark spot that doesn't want to come off. So I will have to be a little more aggressive here. Which is the last thing I want to do is be aggressive, but if you get a dark spot that doesn't want to go away, and needs to go away, and I got it. You came off and then it left something else in its place all right there we go okay so this kind of lightens as it comes out here and then I need let's see we're gonna go we're still for 2h good 2h here okay and mildly lighter here got a text message yay somebody remembered me okay then I notice that I need my 4H here the the nostril needs to be a little more aggressive here which means this one has to be darker so let me go get another 4H 4B here I'm going to sharpen this little puppy if I need I need to get in here and put an angle to this there we go all right And see, by virtue of the darker graphite being applied here on the outside, it forms the shape of the nose that happens to be on the light side. So you don't have to have lines depicting things. It just naturally flows. And i got to lighten all this here because it got spotty. Okay, and using my 2H, no, my 4H, I want to keep it light, but right here, okay, we need, that's 4H, I'm going to have to go 4H, right here, we need to go a little darker, not much, just a little darker than the, than the 4H, so I'm using the 2H to go just a little darker than the, 4H. Okay. 
Okay. Then it looks like uh, there's a little highlight on the other side of it, which makes it really show up. I'll get that in there like so. And then, let's see. I think this may be a little too, this was a little too aggressive. 4B may be a little too aggressive. I'll take that down a little bit. All right. 2H, where are you? 2H, here. Okay. Uh, all right, we got, we have highlights, highlight here. It's highlighted here, lighter skin here. and up here all right kind of look at the shape of that shadow just make sure that I get it in the right angle this is painstaking but you know normally when people are drawing they don't have thousands of people watching over their shoulder that kind of is intimidating but it's all right I've done it long enough not to worry about it. Okay, and then what I'm going to do here is I need to get me a new new Q-tip. My chosen blending instrument at the moment. And I just want to soften that 4H and that 2H that I just laid down. I'm going to soften all this. And the process takes some of it up. Okay. Okay, you can see that. See that here. This area right there. I need a little more lighter area right there. So I'm going to be switching off from the 2H and the 4H here for the lighter side. So this 2H then begins down here again. And it goes down into here. All right. So I think I've got the shading for now pretty good here. This may be a little bit on the dark side. It's hard to tell this early on. It may be a little bit too dark. Um, I can certainly take a little bit of the dark specks off and put it back on later if necessary. Yeah, that doesn't seem to hurt it any. Okay, and then I notice that there are areas here that needs a little bit of lighting. So we'll lighten that up a little bit. I have to start stretching this thing out, get it cleaned up. It seems to be losing some of its oomph. Yeah, it's kind of breaking pretty soon. Look at that. This, this thing may be expired from being left out for so long. All right. And let's see. Let's start. Let's start dealing with the shady side of the nose here. Um, I noticed that it's a little lighter around this area here. Down about right there. A little higher up. Even higher than that. Okay. When in doubt. All 
All right, so say from there to there. So from right there to there. So okay. All right, so this area here needs to be a little bit straightened out. Okay. Yeah, a loose skin somewhere. Can't have that. Okay, that feels like it was. Let's see, is this the right one? No, the other one was. Okay. See, I have blue tack here too, so sometimes I get the two mixed up. All right. So, let's do this. Here's my my charcoal pencil, my Elite Grande, and what I'm going to do here is I need to follow a pattern. Looks like it comes down to here. Okay. Then goes and curves around to the eyebrow here. All this looks like it's darker here. And this part here. It appears to work its way up this way. And this part here is supposed to be darker here. And then this just goes to there. Alright, just trying to mimic what I see in the reference photo. Okay. And of course, then you get your little pattern design going on here. And this part here comes like this. Looking at negative space here, you see this light area? Then it come, see how it curves around like this? Ooh, that was bad. Don't want anything on my reference photo. I might draw it in my drawing. Okay, this area right here, and then you have mid-tone between here and here, and it has this shape that goes like this and like this. So I need to mimic that sh shape. Now you may go, where? I don't see it. Well, that's the trick. You have to really pay attention to when the tones change. And I see it changing here and curving around to here. They look like shapes to me, just lots of shapes, and I just want to copy the shapes. See, I could see, for example, that very subtly there's this triangle right there. So I, I just want to get it in there, but ever so slightly that you, you'd be like, what? Where is that? Okay, but it's there. I see it. I see it there. Okay, and then this shape comes down to here. It needs to be a little lighter right there. There's this lightness that happens, this change of tone that happens right here. It looks like a Y. Why? Because we love you. A little Mickey Mouse Club there for you. All right, and then I see it coming down dark here darker I should say to a point this whole area here is dark toned to just there looks like I already had it in there and then there's a little lineish area there and then this whole area is darker here okay and this area has to be all darker Okay, this has all got to be darker in here. OK, 
Okay, now I need to blend. And when I blend, guess what's going to happen? It's going to lighten up again. Now I have to do a blend, uh, add more charcoal again, and over and over. But that's part of doing it the right way. There's some lines in there I don't want, but I'll get to that in a minute. So let's just see, okay, we, we've got this cloudy shape here, this mid-tone here, and this light area here. So I've duplicated that somewhat here. Um, got this dark zone here. Then the mid-tone here, I could use a little more mid-tone here, and there's, there's also a little dark right here. Okay, I'm gonna make sure that it's lightened up. It's too easy to go dark here. Matter of fact, that's too dark. I'll lighten that up with the blend. Okay. It's all mid-tone right here. And blend that into the neighboring lighter area so you don't have such a strong demarcation from one area to the next. Pick some of this up that doesn't belong there. Okay. Uh, okay, need to be a little lighter right there. Now, if any of you say, hey, you're if you're thinking you're that I'm being a little nicky picky on some of this then maybe realism isn't something you want to get into because you're going to have to get nicky picky if you really want to capture the original. Got to lighten that up a little bit right there. It's too dramatic. Too dramatic still. Let's see, you can probably take me blending into this area a little bit more. I didn't get that area there and I didn't get this area here, so I'm gonna have to go back there. Okay, that needs to go down in here, like so. Alright, how's that starting to look? I think it's starting to look a little better. I do have some oddball things going on here that I don't like. This needs to be broken up a little bit because it's more spottier than right. you need to get a little darker here I think I'm a little too dark with this um, and I don't want to play with that anymore so let's see I'm gonna here's an HB charcoal pencil let me see what that will do for me if it if it's a little more subtle, I think that might work pretty good with a light hand. Okay, because this all here needs just to be a little bit less bright. I don't want to wipe out those little highlight thingies I did in there. I nailed one of them. I'm going to have to put that back. Alright, I think I'm getting close here to where I want it. Hmm. 
See how those two look compared to each other. Not too bad, huh? Okay, and we got all this here. Definitely all this here. Comes down to there. Okay. Then we got all this. Then this part here crawls up to there. I see a little bunny with bunny ears here. Okay. Yeah. Okay, then it's a light area here. That means there's a darker area about right here. Looking at that negative space here. Okay, and then that comes down to there. Then there's this bright area here that I need to to put in here. So means I gotta draw dark around it. And it looks like I may have to lighten that area up to achieve what I want. So let's try that. I don't want to go too light though. And I think I'm already risking that right there. So I may have to tone it down. At least get it started here. Okay, this area here kind of goes up like that. Okay, it's getting close. This area here is slightly lighter. kind of loops around like this like okay let's uh well let's take some of this off and then I could just put it back on okay I'm drawing with my erasers what I'm doing okay, and this part's lighter so I'm just gonna poke it a few times see how that looks okay that's kind of good it's kind of good uh, It'll blend better here. This is terrible up here. Okay. I came across here. Okay, and this comes up like so. There's so many variances of tones on this thing that it's just so easy to get carried away and have to go back and then put some more and then go back and put some more and you know, but you do it until you feel like you've gotten what you are trying to get. I need to, I'm going to take my Q-tip again and try to fix this blot, blotchiness here. Don't want it blotchy. Blotchio. So I'm wiping it off and it's lightening it up a little bit which I don't want it to lighten up too much okay well we're definitely getting somewhere um, I'm getting this very close to what I see right here with this light box on it'll be interesting to see how it looks with the light box off no doubt it's going to be way darker but I'm going to draw it with the light box on for right now so I can catch all the details um, certain things here that I have to make sure that I get, like right here, okay, this comes down to here, OK, 
Okay, this part here kind of Of course the areas around it's got to be darker too so all this has got to be darker I can't get too much darker I think that's pretty good Now, doing this in real time, of course, means I'm going to be quiet sometimes um, because, you know, I have to kind of... Talking and drawing doesn't always go hand in hand. I hope you all understand. So, as I'm doing this for you, um, I do need a little bit of your patience with me so that uh, I can get my work done. This is for a client, my dentist actually, so he's been patiently waiting for it for some time now, obviously. So I want to get it done. And I know that we've been together, you've been following me on this same drawing for some time. So I'm sure it would be nice to branch off and start doing some other drawings. But this is a from beginning to end tutorial, so you're getting the benefit of seeing me do this all the way from the beginning. Now as I'm doing this, I'm being mindful of the change in tone and I'm adding a little more weight down on the pencil uh, when I feel that it it's going to a slightly different darker tone area so like for example under the eye here may be mildly darker than than right here so I will draw that in but then I will adjust because it's all very subtle. See, so this whole area here, this cheek area, so I'm going to come in here like so, and this whole cheek area right here, and then down to here, goes up to about right here, and it has this kind of lighter lighter skin effect here so I need to project that but it's very very subtle now unfortunately it's not wanting to come off so I'm going to have to do it this way right up to the eye right there and then it goes in an angle like that so I'll just do that and then 
and it goes off to the side where the hair is. Interesting. Okay, so it's very subtle, very light, as you can see. Try to get the shape just right. See, I know that shape there doesn't belong there. Okay, kind of goes to there. Curves up. All right, so it's a little on the light side there. And then down here needs to darken up. I'm constantly looking at my reference photo trying to make sure I'm getting the shape right here. Okay, that seems to curl around and curl up. So let me just do that. Then let me round this off here. This part here does not belong, so let me get rid of that. It's like a line. I don't want any lines there. All right, let's take this Q-tip and kind of blend it. All right, and this is all going to have to get darker here. Clearly, I could see. Yeah, I'm kind of giving it an illusion of hair, beard hair, by using these little light pencil strokes. Just gliding that pencil. Needs to be sharper, I'll sharpen it. Okay, be careful because it's charcoal that you don't break the tip. Well, let's just let's get that stubble in there. I think that might be the bottom of an ear we can just barely see. I'll worry about the white hairs later. I'm just going to get some 
I'm going to get some strokes in here. You're obviously not going to be drawing a bunch of individual hairs. Not a good idea. But I do need this to be darker. I wish I could see where this mouth was going. It looks like from there. Best I can tell. Anyway, and then everything is dark from the mouth. And it comes out lighter. Notice how I bounce around a lot? It's either that or I just pack up my suitcase and go because I'm going to get bored to death in one area too long. And plus I have to engage in an area once something kind of pops out at me. I don't want to go, okay, I'll do that later because it's not like I'm going to stop and take notes to remind me to do it. So I just do it on the spot. Okay, then this thing here is going to have to go more upwards and see that's starting to look correct to me the, the um, width of the lips kind of eyeballing it the hairline there going up to here That's clearly up here. You see, and then when you get your mustache or beard and all that drawn in, you can come in with your eraser or toothpick and, and this little doohickey here, this uh, frisket, for example. See what I did with my toothpick? Well, actually I have a tool that I use now, so I don't even have to use a toothpick anymore. Where's that tool? There it is. One of these things. I don't remember what they're called. The Ricky Do tool. I don't know. But you come in here and you can you just do one of these numbers here. You just go get those highlights in there. See? And you can go in there with your light pencils and blend it in or whatever you want to do. See how cool that is? Just make sure you're looking at your reference photo often so you're not just drawing willy nealies all the time. Occasional willy nealies in hair is fine, but not if you're doing it all the time.
Okay. Uh, let me get the shape of that. Look at the shape of the darkness here. Making sure that I mimic now. There's a couple little light ones in here that I need to get in there, but overall, it's overall dark. All right, and so let me just go take this to something here. Put to use later. Then I come in here with my light pencil. Wherever I did with it, I laid it down. So here it is. So I come in here, for example, with my 2H, and I can just start to tone those down because they're not that bright. Okay. You don't want you don't want them to be highlights. They're not highlights. Well, they are highlights on the reference, but I mean I don't. They're not reflections. Wish I knew how to say that the correct way. But anyway, and then I want to go in here and take my eraser and there's areas here that has lots of light area, and I want to get those like right here. Okay, so I'm looking at that shape, and I just, I'm, I'm erasing a shape that I see here. And not worrying so much about individual hairs. Okay, that's going to be good for now. I'll come back to this later. You can see this whole thing over here is going to need to be lightened up. Over here, down here. Okay. All right, well, that's looking Scooby Doo ish. I can of course use this to do a few of these little numbers too. Okay, so you know, kind of mimic this. Here you have dark, here you have dark, here you have light. Try to try to separate them here as well. You know, here you have dark, here you have dark, and then you're gonna have light right in here, a light area. So I still have some more work to do in here, but anyway, I don't want to do it all right now because I'm focusing more on this side but when I see something I just go over and do it I have to sharpen my eraser too alright but I'm liking how this is coming out anyway I still have more to go it still needs to be somewhat darker over here than I you notice this here is much darker than here, and I've got light shining through this thing. So clearly I have a ways to go over here, but we're getting there just little by little. I'm getting this thing shaded down, and uh, pretty soon this hopefully will look a lot like that does. All right, well, that's going to do it for this session. Uh, looks like we're a good one hour, well, one hour into this, so that's pretty long. And uh, I will see you in the next, uh, next part. I hope you like this. If so, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. Click the notification bell. And I'll see you, you know where, here at the next video. Bye.